one has come back home. We are here for the British Grand Prix, but it might not be for very much longer for the rest of the season. The F1 season is in major doubt as races are set to be cancelled due to worldwide protests with regards to the fuel crisis. Now, it is becoming a massive problem now with delivery of fuel to multiple countries across the world. And due to this, there is continuing increase within fuel prices and also delays in which delivery of fuel is being handed out to each country and in course each petrol station. This is of course meaning that multiple petrol stations are having to close until they actually get their supply of fuel. But motorsports is now being heavily targeted with regards to the fuel crisis. But why has motorsports got themselves involved in the fuel crisis? Well it's quite simple, the amount of fuel that motorsports uses to host in a specific event. Now of course with regards to Formula 1, there is a lot of fuel that is used, whether that is the team buses getting themselves down here, different aeroplanes to go to different countries across the world, massive freights, and of course, well, the racing. That's the biggest problem here, and it's causing a lot of problems. Now, the FIA and Formula 1 are working hard with all of the future uh, race uh, organizers to try and see if they can actually host the event and they're basically trying to put together all the information to showcase that the fuel that is being used in Formula One is not quite the fuel that you'd be seeing in the real world and it's also being specified for these Formula One cars of course we've got much more sustainable fuel now in these Formula One cars but it seems that the public don't quite see it that way. Now, unfortunately, one team is starting to really feel the pressure as the protests in France get worse. That is really starting to hurt Renault and their overall business. There is rumours going around in the panic that Renault are considering their options away from Formula 1 due to this fuel crisis. It is starting to get more severe as the Formula 1 race calendar is going to probably get shortened, but we might even see less teams on the grid as a result of this. This is just a rumour with regards to Renault, but this is not how Formula 1 should be starting its race weekends. But unfortunately, it's a bigger problem than just Formula 1. It's a worldwide crisis. Taking a look then at the race news and moving away from the real world and bring ourselves back into Formula 1. Ferrari and Mercedes were the two fastest teams in practice, but it was McLaren and Red Bull that were very close behind. In fact, speaking of all of those teams that were very much in the mix, none of the teams actually know who's the fastest right now, despite the fact that Ferrari and Mercedes were fastest between the two of them in FP1, 2 and 3, McLaren and Red Bull were still very close behind and there was just no real major gap, with the gap between all of the teams very much around about three tenths of a second separating all of them. Renault were a team that were not happy with their qualifying simulation as they've been struggling for quite some time, but they were very happy with their long run pace, specifically on the medium compound tyres. They're going to be looking to take advantage of that heading into the race. And Audi, unfortunately, were not happy with their car, specifically the rear end. And of course, around a circuit which is full of high-speed corners, you really need that confidence in the rear end to attack the corners. And unfortunately, they don't have that. So unfortunately for them, it may just be a difficult weekend. Yo, what's going on, guys? It is Fox19 here. Welcome back to a brand new video and another episode of the F1 Journey for you guys today here on the channel. Today, we're here for the British Grand Prix. Uh, our home race, so hopefully we can have a good event. But traditionally, this is not the easiest circuit, especially for the player again versus the AI. But of course, we're going to give it our absolute best. If you guys end up enjoying the video, drop a like, subscribe if you're new around here as well, and let's get straight on with this race because as things stand, we don't know how many races we've actually got left uh, due to all the problems going on in the world right now. But at the moment, we can focus on this event because at least it's going ahead. Our first lap was actually quite poor. We actually went wide uh, through the last corner there uh, and set ourselves up badly uh, for the run there. And our second flying lap, we only improved in the final sector. Didn't improve in sector one or sector two. So uh, we keep on going. I put plenty of fuel in the car. The tires weren't actually fading away. There's very little tire wear around this track. So I decided to go again and we improved again by another three and a half tenths of a second. So at the moment, it's not quite going to plan here, but here's our final flying lap. I decided I'm going to showcase it for you guys. So let's get straight on with it then. So to go towards the first few corners then, 
breaking nice and late here at the 50 meter board uh, with these cars. And you can see we've gained a little bit of time now as we go in towards one of the crucial corners here at the loop. Uh, as we now make our way down the straight here and we're already now about a tenth and a bit up. Uh, on our previous best lap time. So, so far, making up a very good amount of time here. And we're currently a tenth up on Callum Eilot's time in P15 through the first sector. But sector one's not the, uh, the sector which really hurts you uh, when you're racing against the AIs. It's actually sector two, but we get a great run there uh, through Brooklands there. And we gain two tenths of a second. Now three tenths up on our personal best lap. And this portion of the track is as flat as you're going to get uh, if you are somebody that believes the earth is flat. As we now go through Maggots and Beckett here, this is where the AIs really ramp it up. And it's, well, basically impossible to keep up with them. We actually do a very nice job there. But as you can see, we are still a tenth up on Calamai Lot. So, so far, we're looking good to try and improve our current grid position. Now, in towards Stone Corner here, breaking into sixth gear, then chucking it up into seventh. Still three and a half tenths up on our personal best lap. But our lap time actually falls away through this section because I actually went a little bit too early on the curb there as we around the final corner but we cross the line and we still improve our lap okay then so here we are on the grid then for the start of the british grand prix and uh, as you can see we're currently going to be starting in p14 it's a one-stop race it is quite standard let's get this underway then five red lights here for the british grand prix and it is lights out and away we go then and it's a decent start from us actually not gaining any positions but crucially not losing any so now as we go towards turn one here getting very close there with Callum Eilat, who tried to swoop down the inside there. But we're just going to set ourselves up for the inside line here. And just take ourselves a couple of places here. Actually, a little bit more cautious. But we do a lovely switch back there. Contact, though, with Lando Norris. A little bit of contact there with Verstappen as well. That was a little bit of a scruffy opening there. Probably more than I would have thought, though. But, crucially, we don't have any damage there. We did a nice little switch then uh, through in towards the loop there. But we didn't gain uh, or didn't lose anything from that. We've gained two places. So, it's all actually okay then as we now go through Brooklyn's for the first time here, my teammate Gasly is uh, currently battling hard with Landon Norris. I think Norris might just have the run here as we now go through towards Cop's corner. Let's see as uh, Gasly on the outside. We've got Norris on the inside here as we get a massive set of uh, oversteer uh, through the middle of that corner. Having to take a track limit warning already on the first lap here. Uh, but it is Gasly uh, that unfortunately has lost out there to Landon Norris, which is a little bit of a shame. But at least we're both still in the race there. But now as you can see here, Gasly getting a very nice run here actually down the straight here in towards Stoke Corner can Gasly go for it running outside here uh, of his of uh, Lando Norris that'd be good for us annoyingly he can't do that but he actually compromises his exit and that's going to give us the opportunity to go down the inside not only of him but also of Lando Norris as well and that's two places gained straight away we might just get a few more here because O'Ward and Leclerc now are batting quite hard here and they've slowed each other down now on the last corner and this is going to be three wide now into the first corner a little bit of barging there uh, between the wheels but crucially we are through and that's four places is gained in the span of like three or four corners there that is exactly what we needed let's go look at the start though and see what happens here so the light squad it's actually quite a decent start from virtually everybody actually nobody really gets a bad start here uh sam there leading as they go through in towards the first complex of corners but as you can see i wanted to basically try and dive down the inside as many cars as i possibly could but it didn't work so eventually then that's when i switched and tried to go through but i got pinned in by Lando Norris, and eventually uh, my plan didn't work. This is on board with Daniel Ricciardo. He actually got a better start here than probably Sam and Reese together uh, as they go through in towards the first corner. But Reese here sticks his nose in. He knows how crucial this is to stay in front of Ricciardo because if he doesn't stay in front of Ricciardo, then Ricciardo can play the backup game uh, versus Sam here. And as you can see, as they go through in towards the loop here, Reese has that outside line, and crucially, that's all that he needed here, and he gets a much better run here, and uh, Reese stays ahead. That was absolutely crucial for him. Lap two of the Grand Prix now. This is Charles Leclerc here, going for another attack here on uh, Pato Water down in towards Stoke Corner. Of course, we've actually got in front of this lot, and uh, Leclerc just swoops around the outside of Ricardo. There was actually no no contest whatsoever there for Pato Awards on that three down. This is on board with Lando Norris here. He's also on the back of Award, and already there's some early warning signs here that something's not right with Pato Award because he's struggling here to keep onto the back of Leclerc. He's got DRS here. There's Verstappen and Gasly going for it now. Down in towards Luffield and also into Brooklyn's here. Brooklyn's and Luffield's one, one way or the other. I think it's Brooklyn's first, then Luffield's. I keep getting those sections wrong as uh, we now go on to the, oh, the old pitch straight here. And look at that though. You can see that Leclerc there building a massive gap now, but Norris is going side by side with the wards into cops around the outside from Lando Norris. That's a lovely overtake there 
from the Brits. And that will surely get the fans going here as they go through towards Maggots and Beckett's. Norris is through nice and safely. Gasly now trying to go for all Verstappen here as they go through the exit of Beckett's onto Chapel and now onto the straight here. Verstappen does a great job there of defending the position, but now Gasly here with the DRS is going to be able to pressure now. As uh, unfortunately for Verstappen, he's boxed in a bit, as so too is Russell now as they go through in towards Stoke Corner. And for uh, Gasly, not quite. Unfortunately, Verstappen here is going to take the high ground and he stays in front of my teammate for the time being. Back on board to Verstappen here. And this is the battle now between him and Pato Award for P11. And as you can see here, Verstappen now dives down the inside of Pato Award in towards uh, Brooklyn and Luffield here. And Verstappen is going to have the better momentum now on the exit of this corner. You can see that there as he just uses the traction to just drive away there uh, from Pato Award. And unfortunately for Pato, something's definitely wrong. Here comes Gasly now for a little bit of a run here. Award tried to go for it into Cops there on, uh, Lant on uh, Verstappen, but it didn't quite work out for him. But yeah, there's something ba badly wrong here with Award's car because he's just not able to just, well, drive. You can already see, look at that. Look at the way that Gazi's just sticking to the back of Award compared to Award on the back of Verstappen. Max is gone at this point. I know Award's got DRS at this point here, but it's a massive gap already for such a short period of the circuit in which Award and Verstappen were next to each other. Round the outside goes Pierre Gasly on Pato Award. Job done for him. But unfortunately for Award, yeah, something's not right with that car. Uh, and that's going to be a big problem now in this Grand Prix because there you can see, look at Gasly already pulling away and uh, Russell managed to find his way past Award. And unfortunately, no disrespect to the drivers at the back here, but the back markers of the Ford, the Aston Martins and the Porsche cars are also getting in on the mix. So whether there's some front wing damage that we just can't see, uh, I'm not really sure. But it, unfortunately, it's going to go from bad to worse here for McLaren because that is Reese there in second place in this Grand Prix. He is out of the British Grand Prix. It is an engine failure heartbreak. I think that's the second time now in the F1 Journey caution, series caution. Uh, that Reese has had an engine failure at the British Grand Prix. He had it a couple of seasons ago when he was leading the race by quite some margin. Here, he was in second place, but unfortunately, his race is done. But that's great for me because that gives me another position. And we're about to go and get another one here because now we're onto the back here of Sergio Perez. And we're going to dive down the inside here of Sergio Perez. Nice late breaking move there uh, from ourselves. Going nice and deep here, but utilizing the, uh, the track here. We're up into sixth place now, but we have lost. Well, we did still keep DRS because we were behind Perez. But now with that move, we have to be careful. And this is why it's taken me a long time as we go back on board with Aston Martins here. It's taken me a long time to climb up the field as we look on board here with uh, Piastri trying to go down the inside of Porcher into Stowe. Piastri looks like he's got the job done here. And Porcher, though, is going to continue to fight this one. He needs to, of course, because this is a great battle uh, that he wants to show that he's worthy of the seat uh, within the Aston Martin team as they go through towards Club Corner now. Round the last corner onto the start finish right here. It looks like it's going to be Piastri that's going to get the position. Bottas wants to get in on the act here, but Valtteri uh, unfortunately is pushed to one side, but Piastri does get the place. But back on board with ourselves here, lap 11 of the Grand Prix. Uh, it's a bit of a, ch a chance for me to summarise the Grand Prix because the pit lane uh, takes about a living daylight of an age. So, the problem that I've got, and uh, well, everybody's got, is we're all in a DRS train. Now, that's absolutely fine. I'm happy to be in a DRS train because I'm not losing any time. Any positions that I'm, I can, I can look after the car, I can look after the battery, I can do a lot of things. The biggest problem that I've got, and the reason why I was nervous going for the overtake on Sergio Perez, if I go for an overtake and I battle too hard, I'm at risk of losing DRS. If I lose DRS, I don't personally believe that I've got the pace to get back into it because, this is, well, the DRS is on the two main straights. And of course, with everybody in front all having DRS on each other, you do not want to lose the DRS in the DRS train. It is the worst thing that you can do. You will just fall away and you, you can push and you can keep pushing but you just won't catch. So at this stage of the race here, we're currently seven tenths behind De Vries. That's absolutely fine. Perez there has actually lost that badly. He's 3.2 seconds back now. And this is what I'm talking about here. Look, we can see that we've got DRS on De Vries. De Vries has got it on Hamilton. Hamilton's got it on Schumacher. Schumacher has got it on Ricardo. Sam though, crucially, has got a gap uh, between himself and his teammate in this front, in this Red Bull 1-2 at the moment here. But now, this is where, uh, for some reason, these medium tyres just kicked on and became almightily good. We set the fastest lap of the race so far. 121-0, and we're getting a great run here. On to Vries now through turn one. We find a little bit of an opening here. Round the outside here, in towards this uh, breaking zone, just like we did on Sergio Perez, making the move there on Nick De Vries. And crucially, we're still in range of Lewis Hamilton for DRS. And I found out where the DRS detection point was for where I'm trying to make that overtake to give me the DRS because at the moment, 
I've set this car up to work beautifully in a straight line because this Renault has converged itself to being a straight line machine as we set the fastest lap again here. Battling now with Lewis Hamilton as we take that wide line through in towards turn one to give us a better run here. Going down the inside once again here of Lewis Hamilton. Well, not of Lewis Hamilton. Once again on Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton there actually gets a little bit flustered. Locks up a little bit. That's given De Vries a little bit of an opportunity. And this is what I was talking about. If we got involved in this wheel-to-wheel -wheel combat, this is really going to set back uh, these drivers as we go through on the straight here. De Vries doesn't have DRS here on Hamilton. Hamilton, though, does have DRS and he's able to survive but crucially you can see there look Hamilton 1.2 seconds back now from ourselves here he's lost DRS it's going to be very hard now for Hamilton to get that back because I've got DRS here as we set the fast lap again uh, just showcasing at the moment on these fresh medium compound tires look at that though deploying the battery through turns one and two just able to just use where the AIs are not and there we go another move then done and that is Schumacher out the way up into third and at the moment on these fresh medium compound tires we have got incredible pace at the moment. We're literally flying at the moment as we go down onto the back straight here uh, with Daniel Ricciardo. But once again, here you can see we've caught up to Ricciardo through towards Cops Corner. We go absolutely flat. Beautiful move there uh, through that section of corners. Now towards Magnus and Beckers. This is where you'll see the AIs now absolutely fly through here. So we've got a lift off through here. Then we've got to break again through here. Look at the pace that Ricciardo has just pulled out there. That was half a second that he just pulled out. But unfortunately, I've got ERS. I've got DRS. I've got Slipstream. And we've got a run on Daniel Ricciardo. And that is second place then up for grabs. And down in towards Sir Co uh, Stowe Corner, we get that done. Uh, Ricciardo goes a little bit wide though, giving Schumacher an opportunity to have a look now around the outside of the Vale chicane here. Will Schumacher get the run that he's looking for? Ricciardo though will have the outside line. It's not quite beneficial for any of these drivers to be battling the way that they are now. And Hamilton fancies a run here. He's got himself back into the fray, but it's Schumacher that gets himself in front of Ricciardo. And that's a great move there for Mick Schumacher. He's up into third. Ricciardo down down into fourth but crucially we're up into second place one more man to catch and that is Sam as we can see Leclerc here going for a move on Sergio Perez into Stowe corner that looked a little bit set and done there for Leclerc but it took a little bit more battling uh, but unfortunately for Sergio he's not able to beat Charles Leclerc in that perspective there as we look on board there with one of the Jaguars of uh, I think it was the Verstappen at the time this is my teammate Gasly now uh, as he's trying to as Lando Norris my apologies uh, we look at Gasly now who's trying to uh, hover over the back of this scrap here between Lando Norris Sergio Perez Paris and also Gasly. This is sort of where Gasly's been throughout most of the season, really. When he's not having a difficult race, he's sort of been in this fight with Leclerc, Norris, and also uh, Perez, it seems, or De Vries. One of the Mercedes tends to have a little bit of a difficult time of things. They go down onto the Wellington straight here. This is going to give a beautiful run here down the straight now for Lando Norris. Also for Gasly here, who's got the DRS. I don't think De Vries, or De Vries might have had, not De Vries, Perez might have had it, actually, from Charles Leclerc. But Gasly here goes down the inside of uh, Sergio Perez and he's actually able to make that one stick so fair play to him great move there this is on board with Pato oh, oh. we haven't said much about Pato uh, from when he was losing places uh, this is actually a clip where he's gaining a place but unfortunately for Pato his race is well very much uh, how, how can I put it uh, not turned out anywhere near what he would have wanted because Ward now he does make the position there but he's still well out of the points here lap 23 of the Grand Prix now you can see here that Mick Schumacher is still hovering unfortunately the DRS train has re-emerged itself with me now being the leader of the DRS train here so now I'm the one that's having to use more of my battery more of my tyres to stay in front here of Schumacher Sam now you can see there five seconds clear as we go up the road it was only two and a half seconds when I passed Ricardo so Sam now has very much put the bolts on and I think for me more than anything I think my tyres are falling away a little bit faster than the rest of the AI series Norris now goes around the outside cuts into the inside of the Vale chicane here now through club and he goes through past Charles Leclerc Leclerc holds it in there Gasly again though hovering trying to make it three wide in towards the first corner will Gasly make it three wide and get some move done he gets past Charles Leclerc and he's going to go down the inside here of Lando Norris. Please make it work, Gazzy. We need the points for the team here. He's doing a great job, though, of getting past Charles Leclerc, and he'll have DRS, surely, on this back straight here. He's got a better momentum now through the straight here. DRS enabled Pierre Gasly. Take a bow, son. What a move here, and Leclerc now fancies a run because for, uh, Lando Norris doesn't have DRS here as they go now through in towards Brooklands and Luffield once again here now. This is a perfect opportunity for Gasly, but I think Leclerc has actually got the move done. He does. Uh, I was going to say, if the two were scrapping, it would have given Gasly 
the chance to break out of the one second barrier of these two. He might just get his wish though, because as they go now through in towards Cops Corner, side by side between Leclerc and Norris. These two are going for it now as they go in towards Vagas and Beckett. Gasly now looks like he might just be clear of that one second window from the two ahead. We'll have a look now as they go on to the straight here, because they're definitely going to be going for it. No, they both got DRS here. This is going to be a little bit problematic now for Gasly, because of course he really doesn't want them to be anybody near them as they go now through. And it's Norris there that gets in front of Charles Leclerc. He's using more of his battery there. Actually gets a better exit there. But onto the last lap of the Grand Prix now. And we're still not secure of this second place here because Mick Schumacher is all over the back of us now. And Gasly, my teammate, has just gone ahead and set the fastest lap of the race so far. Gasly with incredible pace right now. If only he was able to get some clean air uh, earlier in the Grand Prix. When, who knows where Gasly could have been in all this. But now as we go on to the straight here, this is crucial now. Because this is the last lap. And this is when the AIs put everything back up to the max here. And really go for it. You can see Sam pulling away massively on the straight here. We go a little bit wide in towards Brooklyn and out towards Latfield here. So we just need to be calm and composed here. Mick Schumacher well, is going to have DRS on us. But we've got half of our battery still to deploy here. And we're going to deploy absolutely everything now on this straight here. As we go in towards Cops now, we're safe once again. But this is not the part of the circuit where we're going to be guaranteed our safety. It's the next straight coming up because there's the DRS detection zone. Mick is three tenths back. He's going to have it now as they go on to the final straight here. This is where it's going to be crucial now. Onto the straight here. Here we go. We've got everything to deploy now. Mick Schumacher's got everything to deploy. Lewis Hamilton's going for a move on Ricardo. Now we've got to defend against Schumacher into Stone Corner. We tried to defend against Schumacher. We've done the job there and defended against Mick Schumacher. Sam's actually going to come across the line and win the British Grand Prix. But for us though, we're just going to hold on here versus Mick Schumacher. Hamilton did actually pass Ricardo there in the background. It is second place though that is coming home for us here today and you know what? That is an absolutely fantastic result for us. One that I genuinely did not expect us to get. Of course, we started right down in like 14th place I think and it was only when we bolted on the medium compound tyres. That first stint on the mediums, I don't know what it was but the car just responded so well and we were able to make up those places and then hold them off when they came back at us. Because uh, I think our tyres, I think we were able to switch on the tyres quicker. But then we lost a little bit of tyre wear uh, later on that we were able to defend. Sam though wins the British Grand Prix. He also actually did take the fastest lap unfortunately away from my teammate Pierre Gasly. Gasly I think set a 20.6. Sam went ahead and set a 20.3. Uh, he sets the fast slap and wins. Uh, we come across the line in second place. We ended up seven seconds behind Sam at the checkered flag, uh, which is a little bit disappointing. I wanted to be a bit closer to him, considering how close we actually were. Um, but that was the crucial thing, is when I got past Daniel Ricciardo, uh, not Daniel Ricciardo, uh, so not, it was, it was, sorry, it was Daniel Ricciardo, I'm right. When I got past Daniel Ricciardo, I was expecting to then get closer to Sam. But crucially, when I was speaking about the DRS train, I wasn't close enough to Sam that I had to have DRS and when it was a case of just normal flat out race pace, Sam had more pace than me. So the DRS trade was crucial. Uh, Mick Schumacher finishes in P3 for Ferrari ahead of his teammate Lewis Hamilton in P4, almost making it an all British, British Grand Prix podium, but it wasn't to be. Uh, all of us separated by just nine tenths of a second. Daniel Ricciardo is in fifth for the other Red Bull car uh, with uh, Nick De Vries finishing in P6. Uh, for the other, for, for, for the first Mercedes, only eight and a half seconds off in the end. But look at that though, that between myself and De Vries, the gap was one and a half seconds. Apologies, I hiccup there. Gazi, my teammate, manages to cross the line in P7 with Norris, finishing in eighth. Charles Leclerc crosses the line in P9 with Sergio Perez rounding off the top 10 for Mercedes, AMG Vestas. Looking at the second half of the table, uh, now you can see here that Verstappen finishes in P11 for Jaguar with George Russell finishing the race in 12th. Pato Award was 13th in a difficult race uh, for McLaren. Oscar Piastri finishes in 14th for Aston Martin ahead of the two Vodafone Porsche cars of Valtteri Bottas and Carlos Sainz. Theo Porsche finishes in 17th for the second Aston Martin car. Van Dorn is 18th for Ford. Reese and Calum Eilat were the two drivers that failed to finish this Grand Prix. And that is going to mean that the title, uh, the driver's championship, should I say, takes a bit of a twist. And that is because after his victory here today, it is Sam that now leads the Formula One World Drivers Championship. He now has a seven point 
lead over ourselves uh, as things stand with Lewis Hamilton third in the championship now after his P4. Reese, of course, not scoring here today means that he drops the fourth in the championship. Hamilton is on 76 points with Reese on 74 points. The 35-point uh, difference uh, and 37 points now. This championship is very slowly starting to turn into a two-horse race between myself and Sam, but there is still time to go depending on how many races we can get in. Mick Schumacher is fifth in the championship, 66 points, very much keep, keeping himself uh, in touch of championship contention. Daniel Ricciardo is sixth for Red Bull with 44 points. He jumps in front of Sergio Perez, uh, who is on 43 points. Nick De Vries, the other Mercedes, is on 37 points. Charles Leclerc sits in behind the two Mercedes cars with 36 points. And my teammate Gasly is now into the top 10 in the championship with 32 points to his name. Looking now at the Constructors' Championship, and things are just starting to get ever more closer. Ferrari lead the Constructors' Championship, but their lead is now just two points between themselves and Red Bull. 157 for Ferrari, 155 for Red Bull. Renault are on 136 points. McLaren stay on 103 points. A massive, massive problem for them. Both drivers not scoring, meaning they lose out in the championship in terms of key ground. Mercedes sit comfortably in fifth on 80 points in the championship, comfortably clear of Audi on 48 points. Jaguar are actually closing the gap, or they're now on 41 points. Those two are going to be battling for that position in the championship. Ford are on six points with Aston Martin on three points. Now, you would have seen in the previous episode that Aston Martin had two points, and in this episode, they're now on three points. Um, I realized I basically did a little bit of rushing uh, for the uh, graphics for the previous episode because I did it before I went away on holiday for a week, uh, and I missed out a couple of things. Uh, some of the nationalities were wrong, teammates wrong. One of them was Aston Martin. They actually should have had three points, um, so I've just added it now, and uh, after the next episode, uh, of the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. I'll be going through and recalculating all of the results to make sure everybody's points is genuinely correct, etc. I do it all the time because mistakes do happen, but they are on three points and Porsche have got no points at the moment. But that is it for this British Grand Prix. Let's get straight now into the post-race notebook and see what the teams and drivers have to say after this incredible British Grand Prix. Taking a look at the post-race notebook, Sam stormed to a home Grand Prix win. He started on pole and led the entirety of the race with pressure being eased after Reese's DNF. Tom managed to charge up to second, uh, making it a British 1-2 with Mick Schumacher holding on for P3. But the biggest story from this Grand Prix was indeed McLaren and their more reliability woes as Reese had to park up on lap 6 of the Grand Prix with an engine failure and Pato Awards had another issue in which hasn't quite yet been uh, formally investigated by McLaren as of yet. But McLaren have ensured that there will be multiple meetings heading into this week to determine what's been going on with their car, what's constantly causing this DNFs, and if there is any possible way of fixing them. But they know that these DNFs will cost them if they are to win the championships once again. But that is it for the British Grand Prix. We'll see you guys next time around for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. If the fuel crisis allows us, we'll see you guys next time. Take care all. Peace.